So there is all kinds of blah, blah. It's in a chapter one of Theo's book. Read it. If you don't understand anything in chapter one, you're not the only person. Don't feel bad. Nobody has been, you know, including me, was born understanding either quantum field theory or nonlinear dynamics or any of these things. And, you know, while you think it's an obvious thing because, uh, Dynamical systems are very classical, though I will discuss a little bit relations to the more modern kinds of physics. You know, in some sense, Newton understood this, but modern technology has made them very you know, very sophisticated. So that's the purpose of this course, to teach you third millennium kind of uh, dynamics of complicated systems described by simple laws, basically. So what's a dynamical system? The two things that I will define in this course, one is a curly M, and that curly M says that there is some manifold loosely speaking. This is not a mathematics course. It's meant to be a working person course, uh, which is all possible states of systems you are interested in. And it's dimensionality sufficient that if you specify a, a set of numbers, then you know where you are uniquely in the state of space. You know. So if it's a double pendulum, it's, you know, a couple angles and velocities. If it's climate, it might be millions or billions of points. And uh, in this course, mostly, but not always, the state space will be finite dimensional. In the beginning, just one, two, three, few dimensions. In modern applications, and the ambition of this course is to equip you to do things like uh, turbulence in fluid dynamics or turbulence in quantum field theory. Uh, these are very high dimensional state spaces, but thanks to computation, machine learning, data science, neuroscience, all kinds of science, we actually know how to deal with these things now. And in that space, there is a point which is a d-dimensional vector in some coordinate system. And then there is a law. In dynamical systems, it's called evolution law point of the first eight weeks of this course is to get to geometrical intuition about geometry of the flows. You know, the brilliant invention of Henri Poincaré 130 years ago, and uh, you know, a key, the reason why so many people like Thurston or Smale or topologies do dynamical systems, the geometry is wonderful. So there is a law and somebody has set down the law. Now, in the dynamical system, people usually think the law is a time evolution law, but it doesn't have to be time. It can be many, many things. But of, time, of course, time is easiest for us to think in because we live in one time dimension and three space dimensions. So what that law does, it takes my initial state and places it someplace else. For example, Newton says if the sun, earth, and moon are in such and such configuration, seven minutes later, they'll be someplace else, but they'll be in the same state space meaning the same set of numbers will specify it. 
So this is uh, what the law does. Now, if this was a math course, which this is not, but I oblige contractually, to be honest, I would specify something that's called measure. Now, if you want to know this stuff, you ask Chris, who is in this course and knows Speak on Tuesday. I find I don't need to define this for what we want to do here. But, you know, it says it's not enough to uh, have a state and a law, but you have to tell me, you know, how do you get your hands on this state? I find that uh, it gets into my way, so I will ignore it. So in this course, we just define this space, state space, That's an engineering term used in robotics and rocket science and God knows what, which I find better than what physicists often used to do. But if system happens to be Hamiltonian, mechanical, energy conserving, having positions and momenta defined, then one talks about phase space. <coughs> That's a just very special situation. The theory that we are developing here is much more general than that. And uh, why is this thing called manifold? You know, it's a nice word. I like the sound of it. But basically, it's called manifold because this thing is not a brick. So when you're in a classroom here, you know, custom looks like that. It has three coordinates. And to specify the position of the, you know, projector in the classroom up here, you have a linear vector space and you can add, if you move someplace else, you can add vectors and do the stuff. Now, the typical system is something that, uh, for example, has velocity square plus potential of the position at Q. So, you know, four velocities and four positions. Uh, and by a magic of physics, they have to conserve energy. So if you have to conserve something like that, you know, of necessity, this is going to be a curved space. So typically manifolds are curved, you know, they're not flat. So that's why we use little curly M. And uh, this is now what we call people who get salaries for that dynamical system. And lots of things that happen in quantitative sciences, things other than psychology and, uh, you know, various kind of human preoccupations, but uh, lend themselves to numerical clear definitions and numerical descriptions, are dynamical systems and their range from, you know, for example, Georgia Tech has a bunch of schools, maybe 15, I haven't counted recently. And, you know, some of them do international politics or do organized crime like business school. But something like 12 of them move fluids around in some form or other. So there is a large subset of science and engineering that has to do stuff like that, which are in very general sense called dynamical systems. Things are described by some kind of law. You're supposed to satisfy the law and you're supposed to make a prediction or description of what you're seeing. 